Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. Is dying on the vine. And another department store, another large retailer has decided to close down even more stores. The story isn't that they're closing down, that they're claiming bankruptcy or anything like that, but it's a progressive shutdown of these large retail companies. And I wanted to come out to a, a mall that in its heyday was super busy. But it's interesting because I was talking to the security guard here and he said, I've been here for a handful of months and I do not understand how these malls are even in business. And I'm gonna tell you how these malls are still in business in a second, but let's go ahead and grab the news and uh, we're gonna talk about that. So this large retailer that's in the news that's closing down even more stores has actually been closing stores for a while, but now accelerating after the news about Macy closing down stores. Now this mall that I'm in right now, like I said, in its heyday, was completely packed with retailers, with stores, restaurants, things like that. But today, what you find is that it's only, I mean, there's like a shoe store and small little things, but it's government buildings. Government buildings have been taking over little by little because they're finding that, hey, we can take over these abandoned malls and do government services out of them and it's cheaper than us acquiring land and building. Now this story says here, a number of major department and mall anchor stores have struggled or gone out of business over the past few years. Macy has closed hundreds of stores while Bed Bath & Beyond ended up being liquidated after a bankruptcy filing. Now, another thing you wanna note is this is really easy to pin on Amazon because Amazon's obviously out there crushing it because they can offer lower prices in stores and malls because they have much lower overhead, right? Fewer employees to packages being shipped ratios, um, larger square footage of warehouses, so your square foot, your price per square foot for rent is much lower, but it's a little bit bigger than that because since the pandemic, we've actually seen we are now at pre-pandemic levels with certain purchases. Um, now, during 2023, visits at indoor malls were down 5.8% when compared to 2019, so pre-pandemic numbers, right? And you've gotta think about it this way. It's a dramatic improvement, it says, from being down more than 15% in 2021, so it is recovering. But at the rate of recovery, is that recovery so slow to where it's too late? The companies have to close up. They can't do business anymore in these buildings. It said similarly, open air shopping center foot traffic was down only 1% last year compared to 2019, according to a new white paper, the comeback of the mall in 2024 by foot traffic analysis from uh, pacer.ai. Now it said a news release citing the white paper notes that the visits for shopping center industry at large were down 2.3% and foot traffic may yet pick up again in 2024. Now, let me ask you this, what's your opinion on that? Do you think the foot traffic in these malls are gonna pick up, especially with the nation dealing with inflation right now? Our nation has not dealt with inflation like this since the late 70s, early 80s. Absolutely insane. They'll let anybody in these malls. Now, this is where we get to the retailer that's closing down. It's JCPenney, right? No news there. JCPenney has been closing down stores consistently for a handful of years. But every time they take out one more anchor, it's a big deal. It says Brookfield Properties and Simon Property Group, SPG, bought JCPenney out of bankruptcy in 2020, largely to keep the department store as an anchor for their malls. So they were in a position where they were sort of forced to buy them out during bankruptcy because their malls were suffering because they would have had, to, had zero anchor stores. So when you're thinking about mall operations, you're trying to bring in all these smaller stores, but the smaller stores don't wanna show up if there's not a draw, a big retailer that can offer super low prices to bring people to fill the parking lot to get them into like, let's say JC Penney's, Bed Bath & Beyond, any of these big ones, right? Especially Macy's. And then they walk around these corridors and they go, look, hey, we're gonna go ahead and look at the smaller businesses. Well now, all the small businesses in this place are government offices. There's one shoe store that I can see. There's a church. I mean, it's absolutely insane. To save money, 
I mean, are you gonna run the, uh, the escalators when there's nobody here and waste that electricity? So Brookfield and these other companies were forced to buy up JCPenney's, but check this out. They say here that's the smart strategy given Macy's struggles, the closure of Bonton in two, 2018, and the general lack of uh, retailers looking to anchor malls. JCPenney closed about 20% of its stores as part of its 2020 bankruptcy, but the chain, which operates 633 stores, most of which are mall anchors, has continued to struggle under its new ownership. Sales have been dropping. The company's fourth quarter net income fell 8.9% to 41 million and net sales dropped 5.9% from a year earlier to $2.3 billion. And this is according to Securities and Exchange Commission filings. Um, now sales dropped 8.9% for the full year to 6.9 billion with net income dropping more than 86%. So, Things aren't looking up for JCPenney, even though they went through bankruptcy, they were bought out through the bankruptcy, these mall operators are holding on to some anchor stores. This mall that I'm in doesn't have an anchor store. The anchor store is the Washoe County Library. Again, a government building. Do you think uh, the library is bringing in a bunch of cars to go and help out with this shoe retailer? More than likely not. And the sad thing is too, is the mall operators, they can only lower uh, the rent so much before they lose their building. You know, properties like this are held up by debt that has to, more than likely, this debt has to be every five years refinanced. And with the increase in interest rates to hopefully, which the Fed didn't do a good job, take care of inflation, they can't refinance at a lower rate, so they're in trouble. And then they have to go into negotiations. I mean, look, you've got stores like this where they're completely empty, right? And then you put up a couple of pieces of clothing to make it look not empty. Well, I hate to tell you, you didn't do a good job. And there are a couple of places here that you could see small, like, ant, you know, gifts, bamboo gifts, and uh, a bridal store here. but. I mean, think of this too, as the economy keeps trudging on and just gets worse and worse and inflation's getting worse and worse, what are the sales doing at bridal shops? Are people still spending the same amount of money? I'd be shocked. But then again, for emotional purchases, they could be, right? So the fact is, small town USA, small retailers are hurting. Look, here's a nail shop that just closed down. It looks like they've just got the trash underneath. It's completely closed down. Now, the story again isn't JCPenney, it's the nation at large. And as inflation gets worse, places like Walmart, Amazon, and the likes will only get larger because they're gonna sell more because people will be forced to go that way. It's crazy being, I mean, this place isn't open yet anyway. It doesn't open for about a half an hour, but you can tell it's just completely and utterly dead. And it's sad because I grew up loving to go to malls. I mean, that was the thing. There wasn't, <laughs> where I grew up, there wasn't a whole lot other than going to the mall and checking out the toy stores and the food courts and all of that kind of stuff, you know? Um, but today there really isn't a mall system out there uh it the whole the whole game has changed as a matter of fact right down the road from where i'm filming right now is an older mall that's been completely it's a really cool idea it's been converted almost to a food truck setup but i mean they've got like these little tiny kiosks for small small mom and pop operations for cooking and they've got all these amazing places to eat and they've got a bar in the middle it's really really cool actually but the sad thing is it's in a really old rundown part of the city. So you got to think twice or pack some heat when you're going because you, you want to always have your head on a swivel. But again, cities are trying to revitalize places, but at what cost? Again, this place, I mean, I look at this and I don't know if you could see it above me, I'll, I'll spin around, but the amount of copper that went into to decorating this place is just absolutely phenomenal. But again, it's all city 
offices. At what point do the city buildings leave the malls and they get injected or, or revitalized with actual businesses that people will want to come and, and frequent these places? I guess uh, only the future is gonna tell us that. Hey, I hope you got something out of this. And thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out. <laughs>